welcome to UK Gaming Network, I'm Zoid Burke. It's Halloween time again, and the perfect time of year to be playing some spooky games. While there's more horror themed titles released today than ever before, uh, finding retro games to play can prove quite tricky, particularly for the Amiga. So in this video I'm going to highlight some games that you could play on your A500 Mini. It's not all about blood and guts in this season, so there are games here for everyone, and hopefully the games that I show will help you find something that you didn't already know about. So grab your pumpkin pie, your toffee apples, or whatever Halloween treats you have to hand, and let's get to the list. Codemasters had such success with the Dizzy series, it was always going to spawn copycats. Blinky was a version produced by fellow budget publisher Zeppelin, and the similarities are so in your face that it's incredible they were allowed to release it. The central character is even white with bright red shoes for heaven's sake. Gameplay is exactly what you'd expect. Jump around, avoid hazards and use items in the right places. It's completely inoffensive and it's got nice colourful graphics. Signosis were always a publisher who specialised in original titles, but then Sony took ownership of the company and three movie licences swiftly followed. It re-envisioned the stylish film as a generic scrolling beat-em-up, where Jonathan Harker explores various grey castles kicking vampires, because we all remember the scenes in the film where Keanu Reeves repeatedly kicked Gary Oldman in the shins, right? Or is that just me? Frankly, it has to be played for you to fully understand how bad it is. Bubble Plus is an expanded version of Bubble Ghost, released two years earlier, with improved graphics and more levels. The objective is simple, guide a bubble through a number of trap filled rooms by blowing it past obstacles. Mouse controls are simple as you rotate your character with the buttons and you press the spacebar to blow. Being a ghost you can move anywhere on screen, and the puzzles are never more complex than having to blow out candles or play a musical instrument to open a safe passage. Later levels are tough, but it's always fun to play. The character of Elvira is well known to the horror world, thanks to her popular 1980s TV and movie appearances. She also lent her name to three Amiga games, although the two Horrorsoft developer ventures limited her appearance to the box art and occasionally popping up in the game. Elvira the arcade game saw you play the horror icon herself. The graphics are excellent and the game is enjoyable despite the level design being flawed, featuring way too many blind jumps in the hope that there's somewhere safe for you to land. When it comes to atmosphere, Horror Zombies from the Crypt absolutely nails the spirit of 1940s and 50s horror films that inspired it. The gameplay is very reminiscent of the likes of Jet Set Willy, as you negotiate over 400 screens of a gothic castle, jumping over traps, avoiding monsters and solving puzzles. It's once again a game that can only be played with either music or sound effects though, meaning that the action is either accompanied by a stirring classical score, or some comically out of place jingles whenever you collect useful items. For some reason, Ocean Software made not one, but two games based on Clive Barker's Nightbreed. The interactive movie is easily the best one of the two, as it does a pretty good job of translating the film's plot into a game. This was actually one of the games that came bundled with my first Amiga 500, and I remember enjoying the mix of story sequences, minigames and adventure sections. It's pretty basic by today's standards, but it's nice to see a developer try something a little bit different with a movie license. Normal practice when making a game based on a movie would be to take a film that's actually good or popular. Gremlin thought differently and adapted one of the most notoriously bad films ever made into a surprisingly decent point and click adventure game. The plot sensibly doesn't follow that of the film and instead sees you playing as a private investigator searching to recover the lost film reels. You actually get to watch sections of the film as you find them and I'll leave it up to you to decide whether that's a good thing or not. The influence of Capcom's Ghouls and Ghosts looms large over Risky Woods, a surprisingly decent arcade game from Dynamic Software. Surprising because the output of the Spanish developer was usually less than stellar, but also because there was very little in the way of previews or hype prior to its release. It features some fantastic, clear, colourful graphics, and some great music. The gameplay is a little bit too tough at times, with a high number of enemies being thrown at you from both sides, but if you stick at it, you'll find it to be immensely enjoyable. Cauldron saw you play as a witch on a quest to restore her powers in the fondly remembered 1985 original, released by Palace Software for the Commodore 64 and Spectrum. In 1992, Titus Software decided to try and revive the IP with Super Cauldron, 
It featured wonderful gameplay quirks, such as falling in water resulting in instant death, unless it happened to be one of those identical bits of water that contained a warp to another level. It's a shame because the graphics are excellent, and flying around on your broomstick can actually be quite fun. Zombies have always made for great cannon fodder in light gun games, but your best option on the Amiga wasn't actually a commercial release. Given away on an Amiga format cover disc, Zombie Apocalypse was made by Vision Software, responsible for roadkill and seek and destroy, and it just keeps things simple. You get a single screen, lots of zombies to shoot, power-ups to collect, and bonus points if you manage to kill everything on each level. It's basically score-based arcade gaming at its finest. Why play the dodgy arcade conversion of Beast Busters when you can play this instead? Thank you for watching, I hope you found something that piqued your interest. Don't forget to check out our other A500 mini videos including my personal top 100 and of course my re-review series. Just click on the playlist of your choice. Make sure to give us a like and subscribe before you go and make sure you have yourselves a great Halloween. Bye for now.